This is Columbus, Ohio, a city with a proud history for horsepower. But today, those smoky burnouts will be replaced by sloppy rooster tails. It's mud, not macadam, and nitrous instead of nitro. Because coming up next, it's drag racing at its dirtiest. Side-by-side -side mud bog action. This is Trucks and Tractor Power featuring the all-stars from the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Spring Nationals. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the National Network. Today, we're at the Ohio State Fairgrounds in Columbus for the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Spring Nationals. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee. And this event, like its namesake in drag racing, is one of the biggest events on the NMRO season. And whether it's drag racing or mud racing, this event brings out the best in cars and drivers. And here with more on that is Army Armstrong. Gary, in the sport of professional mud racing, three names always seem to come to the top. And we're going to have a chance today to see those three names plus some super guns. The names we're talking about will be Tom Martin. Now, Tom is a four-time world champion, but all his world championships have been won indoors. We're outdoors today. Longer track, much more speed. Let's see if he can be a player. Who's he going to be competing against? One of the other big guns we were talking about a moment ago is a vehicle that goes by the name of Tater. Yeah, out of Missouri, the Tater vehicle, your current world champion, that's Ron Pence. He's kind of found some kind of a trick in the drivetrain. He's got everybody buffaloed. He's quick. Let's keep an eye on him. However, the unknown today will be out of the Lone Star State of Texas, the Tyler, Texas native, George Gregory is trying to find the winning combination he's had three times to be a world champion in the past. He and his crew have completely redone their chassis. They moved the engine back 23 inches, dropped the center of gravity down. They are literally ready to go bear hunting with a switch in Columbus, Ohio. Back to you, Gary. And are we speaking of big guns? There's a look at Chad Miller, the driver of the Instant T. He's also a big name competing here in Columbus. We'll go racing right after these messages. We are in Columbus, Ohio, where four trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Spring Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong. And we are ready for action over 180 feet of mud. The paddle tires and the Class 6 Open Unlimited. With the best overall time, only one pass, side-by-side -side competition against this right here, the clock. Yeah, oh, the timer is going to tell the story today. And, you know, like you are saying, you've got one shot. You know, you got to take your best shot. Now, Jeff Ballard comes out of Mount Sterling, Kentucky, with basically an underslung chassis. He'll be going up against Tom Martin out of Indiana. Martin is a four-time world champion. We told you the story at the opening, but all his world championships came indoors. We're outdoors. A whole new ball game. But we got two rocket rides right at the very top of this. Yeah, there's a world of difference between competing indoors and outdoors. A longer track outdoors, a lot more speed they carry down through the mud. 180 feet of mud. A good ride for both of these drivers. A very close run. Remember, it's against the clock. 2.76. And we look at Martin's time of 2.83. Oh, we have just started the competition, and the fans have already seen two two-second runs. Let's watch again. Gary, the track is definitely showing right off the bat. It will hold the horsepower today. It's kind of like a pool table. You come off a flat surface into the mud and then come back out. That can only get worse, but two runs under three seconds off the bat is great. Jeff Ballard, left lane, takes the quick one right there. He is the man to beat, and he's standing by now with Army Armstrong, the veteran from Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Gary, we're standing with a guy right now who drew a quick early number. Quick time so far. Is it going to hold for you? Is the track going to come to or go away? The track's real good right now. I don't know. They some awful good trucks are behind us, but it may last. I don't know. Hope it does. And we look at the mud out of Pennsylvania, Pete Resig in the funny car and here is a man out of texas who is always tough george gregory in the new breed gregory's running a unique situation being the supercharged engine in the far lane with the shorter chassis we opened the show we told you they lowered the center of gravity moved the engine back trying to get it to balance out a little bit better the first run on the vehicle let's see how it handles it goes quick i'll say that oh he is quick out of the gate well, Army, I am eager to take a look at the replay because listening to that, it sounded like he may have burped that throttle about 50 feet out. Yeah, and he still goes at 286. That's exactly what I saw. 480 in the other lane with the full body car, but Gregory, the guy everybody was watching, like you say, came out of the throttle at the 50-foot mark. Watch the replay come up right here. He's out, back in it, and still goes under three seconds. 
And Army, your track side, you've caught up with George Gregory. George Gregory at 286 on a vehicle that's never been down the track before. Are you satisfied with it? Uh, not really. Uh, we had a chassis giveaway on us. I thought the car left good. Uh, it, I think it was adjusted out, hooked real hard. And then somewhere out there when the clutch locked up, it wadded the rear end of the chassis up and it made a left turn and we had to backpedal a little bit. And then we come on out, but it was a hard right turn the rest of the way from that midway point. So uh, performance wise, I think it done all right. We're just gonna have to beef up the bottom end on it, on the chassis. Coming up next, a look at Big Al Ash in the Beef T Blue, the Chevy S10 with a 512 Lauren Rodeck, and he goes up against the uh, the Dodge called the Shark Attack. And look at the fin. You know, the fin's interesting, but I was talking to the driver of the blue vehicle. He said Joliet Jake and Elwood, the Blues Brothers, were his idols when he was a child. So, whoa, look at here. Well, the Shark has a problem right off the starting line. And Big Al takes that one at 2.98. Once again, the time to beat is a 2.76. That won't be fast enough. But, Gary, we've seen three races. That's six vehicles, and four of them have gone under three seconds. In the two-second two club. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, once again, we take a look at Al as he takes the victory. And we'll go down trackside in the mud. And, Army, I think you've caught up with Big Al. You know, it's kind of interesting that... The open competition, anything goes, and that's body styles included. And this guy comes out, Al, why do you run a full body when a lot of the guys seem to just be getting as light as they can? Well, I have a bunch of different reasons. Uh, I have a four-wheel drive shop at home. Uh, I like to keep it looking like a four-wheel drive, so we keep a four-wheel drive uh, full-size body on it. Yeah, and it goes awful fast, too. Uh, it goes fast. We're trying to get it dialed in a little bit better all the time. This is only our second outdoor show. We're working the bugs out of it. And there is a look at the uh, time traveler. Out of Michigan, that is Bud Thompson in the 23 Alter T, 540 cubic inches of blowing Chevy. He takes on Dave Ryan in Intrepid, a Power Pro 23 Alter with a big cheap black Hemi. You know, if you follow a drag race, and this looks like a competition eliminator race here, two 23 Ts out there, long wheelbase, Chevrolet powered in the red vehicle, Chrysler powered in the far lane. When you see guys like this go to the line, you just want to kick back and watch because this is what's going to happen. Let's check the times. Both these guys have been in the uh, two-second bracket before. That was a good side-by-side -side run, Gary Lee. Ryan in the Intrepid had the quick one at 2.85. And the other time is at 2.97 again. Sub three seconds run. That's, that used to be the exception. Now it's the rule, Gary. Let's take are, a look yeah. again and watch Ryan come storming out of that 180 feet of mud. He walks across the Man, mud. That was, that was a good race. That was pretty. And he uses all the area he has to use down there to get that thing slowed down. As we will take a look now momentarily at the current standings. Once again, Jeff Ballard out in front with the Fort Brothers Express at 276, then Tom Martin at 283, and Dave Ryan in Intrepid at 285. But coming up, we still have yet to see Ron Pence and Tater. And we'll sling some more mud in Columbus, so stay with us. Welcome back to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. What a tranquil scene. This is the Scioto River and a shot of downtown Columbus. Now, we're a few miles north at the Ohio State Fairgrounds, and down there around the starting line somewhere is Army Armstrong. Gary, I'm about 150 feet away from the starting line, but the drivers are telling me that the concrete slab that I'm sitting on right now is just about like the starting line. The problem they're having up there is on the start, it's literally like concrete. It's real hard packed. They can't get a bite. The guys are saying the engines are jumping to like 10,000 RPMs as soon as they hit the throttle. On the throttle, into the pit. Then the chassis take over to get all kind of real weird bites. And on the other end, you jump out of the pit, back onto some more concrete like clay. The drivers are really having some problems figuring this track out. And there's a guy who is acclimated to running indoors and running off his concrete, a two-time indoor champion, a two-time outdoor cut tire champion. That's Ron Benson Tater. His combat will be Jeff Corbett in Thunderstruck. Now, Corbett out of New Albany, Indiana, could be a player here, but everybody's keeping an eye on Tater. They know that he can really, really rock and roll you. Tater has figured something out in the drivetrain. I don't know what it is, but he makes a really good horsepower, and he makes it stick. Corbett knows he can be a player. Right now, he is going against the clock. Look at Tater. 
Oh, a good run oh. for Ron Penn. And his time is 2.79. That will put him second on the leaderboard. And here is the time at 2.98. That's the time for Jeff Corbett. Let's take a look again. Look at the whole shot that Tater gets. Gary, I'm going back to the scoreboard. Everybody seems to be figuring this track out and going under the magic three-second shot. A very fast track here at the Ohio State Fairgrounds in Columbus. Let's go track side with Ron Penn. Ron Penn's at 279, puts you in the number two spot right now, but the track looks like it's giving the chassis fits out there. What's it like? Well, he's a big hole right off the starting line. It's just like diving off in a big hole when you go out. And then you come back up again, and it's just hard to get uh, keep it straight and keep it going. Next matchup, we'll have Shane back in the attitude adjuster. He will go up against the top gun of Dan Brown. Dan Brown in a pro Jeep. Back, of course, is a 23 Alter T. When we talk about these body styles, what they are, they're fiberglass replicas of a Jeep and a 23 T. These guys are building these vehicles as light as they can. Back out of Jeffersonville, Kentucky. Boy, this, this kid is an up-and-comer. Now, these fellows are starting to develop followings now on the national circuit. Get a little bit of TV time. People realize how exciting this sport is and how serious these guys are. Here's just a little bit of proof of it right now. Going to that 276. Now, the first one through the gate, of course, was Dan Brown. Back pulled the feet out of the water. That's the front wheels and sat down so hard he blew both front tires out. Look at that. And we're awaiting the time for the attitude adjuster. Going up here for Shane back. There it is, 2.98. So he'll limp back to the paddock area as we'll take one more look and we'll see if we can't uh, watch for the air to leave the rubber. What front the, tires. He'll power right there. He powered them up. Now he sets it down. They only run about four pounds of air pressure anyway, so it doesn't take a whole lot to blow those front tires out. Not like running a sprint car in a little dirt oval. Not a lot of tire pressure in the right rear. Well, speaking of sprint car, where is this guy from? He's from the hotbed of sprint car country, Gary. Yeah, up in the Midwest, he's from Vandalia, Ohio, outside Dayton, Chad Miller in the Instant T. And he goes up against Joe Dory and the Instigator all the way down from New Jersey. And Dory comes out with a new concept. He goes to the nose of this thing, trying to get it all figured out. Chad comes out with a vehicle that's kind of tried and true, and he knows he can boogie with this yellow 27 Roadster. But... Dory is still playing around trying to figure the combination the time they're trying to beat that quick 276 on a 180 foot track. And Chad Miller takes the measure of this one in the instant T. We'll check the time, see if it's a quick one. Well, there's the time for the uh, rear engine vehicle at 3.82. And there's a 3.01, and Chad won't be too happy with that one. No, but I tell you, that tells us the track, I believe, might be going away a little bit. You notice, Chad, how he's kind of banging a wall, and uh, you don't go straight. You know, the straight's the quickest way to get there. They're getting caught in ruts right now, Gary. Also coming up from Vandalia, Ohio, is Chad Miller's buddy, Tom Marsh, in the Intruder. And he'll go up against uh, Mike Jennings. Think fast. I like the names, I like the color. You know, you think mud racing, you wouldn't realize that these guys would get so serious about having good looking or good appearing vehicles. They're really bringing a professional aspect into the sport, aren't they? Now look at the intruder, green and purple. What a color combination. Hey, work. look at the guy in the other lane, purple. And yellow. Oh, he's in trouble, hang on. He almost got those uh, water barriers over there, those hydra barriers. That's why the sport is getting popular, popular, popular. You see stuff like this all the time. You don't believe me? Look at the crowd. I like these names, like the Think Fast Car. How about Hold Your Breath? I just named mine. Whoa. Well, that will get your attention. Once again, Boy, Tom he is Marsh gets in trouble right here about halfway down. Hooks totally out of control right now. He's almost along for the ride until that car settles back down. Now he tries to gather it back in. Now he perfs the throttle to make it settle in. So he's had a chance to catch his breath and walk over to talk to Army Armstrong. Well, Gary, the wild ride seemed to be the norm today. Tell me out there uh, what happened, just as simple as that. Well, I think I had a failure on a suspension part out there that caused it to pull to the right there. And once I got hooked on that wall, all I was concerned with was keeping it on its you know, wheels and getting out of the way of the other guy on the other side there. 
you know, because I knew the run, you know, I couldn't salvage anything with the run the way it was going. Okay, were you in the gas or out of the gas? I had to get back in it or I would have been upside down for sure and I possibly could have been, you know, in a tangle with the other guy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It is truly amazing how cool, calm, and collected these guys can be after a ride like that. Current standings showing Jeff Fowler in the Pork Brothers Express still on top of 276, then Ron Pence in Tater, and Tom Martin in the Super Trooper. So we still have six more combatants to take a shot at Jeff Fowler when we come back to Columbus, Ohio. Stay with us. Welcome back to Columbus, Ohio, where Ford Trucks present the Penta four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Spring Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. These Jamborees offer a host of activities for the truck lover, as well as the entire family. To find out more, call or write the Special Events Promotion Company. So now, once again, we only have six more combatants to take a shot at Jeff Ballard. And one of them will be Gary Osteen in one of the more popular vehicles, the uh, Dirty Bird. He'll go up against Mike Quattros, the Team Rancho Funny Car. One of the things about Osteen, it's, it's ironic, Ford engines make a unique kind of horsepower. Osteen is one of the diehards. Look at the exhaust stacks. I mean, he's running a load in that engine. He is loaded for bear. Two of the biggest Fords in the country come out and go against each other in this round. Osteen's been on our show many times. He's won some big events. He knows he has the potential to get the Pork Brothers. It's going to take something quicker than that 276 to do it. And these guys are also showing some major sponsorship here. Yeah, the Rancho suspension people are back in the Ford on the right-hand side of the screen, but the Dirty Bird out of Florida, he cut the quick time that round with a 293. Meanwhile, the Rancho suspension team, they're going 335 in a full-body car. I guarantee you take that body off, you go about a half a second quicker. Well, Osteen used to have a full-body Thunderbird, and he took that off because of weight. And he's going to the head of the class, so. Well, now let's go back trackside where Army is caught up with Osteen. Gary, we're talking with a guy that's run on all kind of tracks all over the country from South Florida. Tell me a little bit about this track here today. It seems kind of spooky out there. Track's a little rough in the middle. Uh, off the line, you get one little bounce, and then right in the middle, it hooks and goes, and then down on the other end, it, it's, it's getting to be rough. You look like a bunch of guys out there playing Froggy C and Froggy Do because you're jumping in and jumping out. That's about the way it looks. Froggy C and Froggy Do. Hey, Gary, I just calls them like I see them. Woo they're jumping in and they're jumping out. Mr. Four-Wheeler coming up next. <laughs> he will pull alongside Insanity, Jeff Acker, Greenville, Wisconsin. Well, Jeff's definitely a player in the sport, but the story on the far side of Mr. Four-Wheeler, McConville, he's the first to bring a supercharged engine into the sport. He was a, uh, on the cutting edge of revolutionizing the sport. Look at that! Boom! Bangs it out the other end. Oh, we have seen some excellent runs here this afternoon. 290, another sub-three-second run. But the first run we had turned in, Jeff Ballard's 276 continues to be the quick one. And it's amazing watching these fellows drive back to the pit area. The intensity is so great. And then when it's over, bam, they just kind of walk away from it. Look at this. This is two of the wildest rides you've ever seen. One goes left, one goes right. Both of them back on the throttle. Hey, just another day at the office. NMRO Mud Race. Well, Jeff Ballard is standing by watching because he has to uh, maintain his position through one more pass with these two competitors. Fred Wilhite, and also running against Fred is Eddie Williams. There is Eddie Williams. Eddie Williams was like a fan of the uh, ZD Top Rock group. You see the head of the boys. Yeah. Meanwhile, Wilhite with the 48 Fiat. He's a player, side by side, Gary. No, nah, it's not gonna be quick enough, though. It will not be quick enough to knock Jeff Ballard off his perch. Yeah, but he still goes a 352 for the money pit. Not gonna be in a program, and a 353 on the other side. That was a close race, Gary. And the final standings, once again, Jeff Ballard wins it. The Pork Brothers Express at 276. Ron Pence and Tater take second at 279. And Tom Martin at 283 in the Super Trooper. Let's go down and talk to the victorious Jeff Ballard. Hey, Gary, we're standing with a guy right now we've already talked to once today, but he held on for the win. Quick time, not by very much. It's amazing how this sport gets down to thousands of seconds, but the pressure had to be on you going first and then waiting and watching. And 
all these guys were taking cheap shots at you. Yeah, Army, it, it'll make you bite your fingernails. We made some real good trucks behind us, but I think the number one draw really helped today. The track seemed like it was getting a little worse as it went on, and uh, we had a good good draw, and it's part of it. Well, when, when they go to the bank on Monday morning, the guy that gets the cash the first place check drives for the Pork Brothers out of the Bluegrass State. Congratulations to Thank you. Thank you, Army. Army, at the top of the show, we talked about the veterans like Ron Pence there, along with Gregory and Martin, but it was the youngster Jeff Ballard and a new chassis that brings home the bacon from here in Columbus. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports.